In this section, we're going to take a look at Fermat's method of infinite descent. So it's a technique for showing that certain Diophantine equations have no solutions in integers. Okay, so overview. So we'll use Fermat's method of infinite descent to show that the following two equations are linked. And we will establish that there are no solutions in positive integers to both of these equations right here. And we'll deduce as a consequence that the very famous Fermat equation with n equaling 4 right here also would have no solution in positive integers. In your homework, you're going to look at a couple of related equations. These two right here. So notice that all of these equations that have no solution, there are two terms with a fourth power and one term with a squared. On the other hand, there's another homework problem where if you just have two squares adding up to a fourth power, you can prove there's infinitely many solutions to an equation of this type. So let's start with a Fermat equation. This is the very famous one, x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n. And in our last section, we looked at Pythagorean triples. That was the case when n equals 2. And we found that there were infinitely many Pythagorean triples. Fermat's last theorem, which is really just a, a claim he made in 1637, is the statement that for n bigger than 2, this equation has no solution in positive integers. And that remained one of the biggest open problems in mathematics for three and a half centuries. And it was finally proven just a couple decades ago, 1994, by Andrew Wiles. Now, in fact, Fermat was only successful in dealing with the case n equals 4, the case that we're going to look at today, although a lot of progress was made on the Fermat problem before Weil's big proof of it in 1994. So in this section, we'll establish the Fermat result for n equals 4 by proving the stronger result that this equation here has no solution in positive integers. Okay, so these are the two equations we want to link together. x to the fourth plus y to the fourth equals z squared, and x squared plus 4y to the fourth equals z to the fourth. So we claim that both of these equations have no solution in positive integers. And as a corollary, we conclude that the Fermat equation also has no solution when n equals 4. Indeed, if we had a solution, so if x, y, z satisfies the Fermat equation, well then, x, y, z squared satisfies the equation in the theorem. That x to the fourth plus y to the fourth is z squared squared, but our theorem is going to establish that there is no solution to this equation right here. So it's an, an immediate corollary. So we're going to introduce the method of infinite descent to prove the theorem. And what it does is it says if we have a solution to one of those equations, then we can get a solution to the other, and vice versa. So we first claim that given a solution of this equation right here, we can obtain a corresponding solution of the second equation, with the w coordinate being strictly smaller than z. So w will be a positive number strictly smaller than the z we start with. And conversely, given a solution of 2, we can obtain a corresponding solution of 1 with the z equal to w. So then, altogether, we obtain a new solution of 1 in which the z coordinate has been reduced in size. And you can go on playing this game. So you get an infinite 
sequence of solutions of one in which the z coordinate is strictly decreasing. And of course that leads to a contradiction. You can't have an infinite decrease in sequence of positive integers. And that completes the proof. So all we have to do is show how do we go from a solution of one to two and how do we go from a solution of two to one. Okay, so the first direction We'll take a given solution of x to the fourth plus y to the fourth equals z squared and produce a solution of the second equation. So again, we'll call a solution primitive if the greatest common divisor of the three coordinates equals one. And I claim that if we have any solution to this equation here, then we can produce a primitive solution. So suppose x, y, z is a given solution. Let d be the greatest common factor. And note that d squared is then a divisor of z. So why is that? Well, you would have d to the fourth dividing x to the fourth plus y to the fourth. So d to the fourth divides z squared which means that d squared has to divide z. So what I do is then replace x, y, and z with x over d, y over d, and z over d squared. So I've divided out the common factor. So this is now a primitive solution of three. Now why is it a solution? Well, if you go x over d to the fourth power plus y over d to the fourth power, that would equal z over d squared squared. You'll have this d to the fourth in, in the denominator that just cancels out. So we can assume that if we have a given solution that it is in fact a primitive solution. Well then what does that tell us? So if x, y, z is a primitive solution of three, then x squared, y squared, z is a primitive Pythagorean triple because x squared squared plus y squared squared equals z squared. And in our previous section we characterized what every Pythagorean triple must look like. So what do we get? Well since it's a Pythagorean triple we can, and let's go ahead and assume that x is odd and, and y is even, then uh, we get the formula from our theorem. That the first term, which is in this case an x squared, must be of the form b squared minus a squared. The even term, y squared, has to be 2ab. And z has to be a squared plus b squared. Our a and b are integers with 0 less than a less than b. a and b are relatively prime. And one of them is even and one is odd. And I claim that b must be odd. And why is that? Let's see. Okay, so we assume that x is odd. So if we look at this equation here, mod 4, you'd have 1 congruent to b squared minus a squared mod 4. And in order to accomplish that, we're going to have to have 1 squared minus 0 rather than 0 minus 1. Okay, so that gives us b must be odd and a must be even. Okay, now focus on y squared equals 2ab. So that says that 2ab is a perfect square. And A and B are relatively prime. Well, how is that possible to have 2 times A times B being a perfect square? So look at the prime factors in A and B. So A and B have distinct prime factors. So A, which is the even number, must have an odd power of 2 in its factorization. 
and then every other power must have an even multiplicity. So A is of the form 2 times a perfect square, and then B, which is an odd number, must have all even multiplicities for the exponents. So B must be a perfect square. Okay, so 2AB being a perfect square tells us that A is of this form and B is of this form just by considering the prime powers. And since A and B are relatively prime, V and W are relatively prime, let's set U equal to X. Then what do we get? U squared is X squared which equals b squared minus a squared. That's coming from the formula above. b is w squared, so that's w to the fourth. a is 2v squared, so this is 4v to the fourth. And so just rearranging the equation, bringing the 4v to the fourth to the left, we get u squared plus 4v to the fourth equals w to the fourth. Aha! we have a solution of the second equation, the companion equation. And how big is W? Well, W squared was B. So W is the square root of B, which is certainly smaller than B squared plus A squared. And that equals Z. So W is strictly smaller than Z. So thus, given a primitive solution, of the first equation, we obtain a primitive solution of the second equation with w strictly smaller than z. So that completes the first part of the proof. Next we have to go the opposite direction. So we suppose we have a solution of the second equation, u squared plus 4v to the fourth equals w to the fourth, and we want to show that we get a solution of the first equation. So in this case, you have u squared plus 2v squared squared is w squared squared. So u, 2v squared, w squared is a primitive Pythagorean triple. And plainly, this is the even term right here. And so there must exist integers a and b, relatively prime, a less than b, and again, b must be odd and a even, with u equaling b squared minus a squared, 2v squared is 2ab, and w squared is a squared plus b squared. Okay, so that's again our theorem on primitive Pythagorean triples. So in particular, focus on this equation here. v squared is ab. a and b are relatively prime, so they have distinct prime factors and they are a perfect square, that means the multiplicity of every prime in A and every prime in B is even. So A itself is a perfect square. So let's say A is x squared, and B is a perfect square. B is y squared. For some natural numbers, x and y, and x and y are relatively prime. Because A and B were relatively prime. Thus, setting z equal w, I claim we get a solution to the original equation. So then z squared is w squared, which is b squared plus a squared. b is y squared and a is x squared. And there we have it. z squared is x to the fourth plus y to the fourth, 
we have a solution of the original equation in which the z value is the same as the w value we started with. And that completes the cycle.